Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again to start the main event of this whole entire hack. Everything that's been leading up to it. Make sure that you're properly equipped. I have the royal crown on Toadstool instead of the protect ring because we need her to be a good healer. As well, we are pretty well stocked up, as you can see. I played through the Xor fight again and got another victory toast because there's really no other way to get out of the castle. And I needed to get out of the castle to get a super ribbon for Gino, and you'll see why later on. But yeah, this is the boss rush. It's going to be hell in a handbasket. Now the first room is unassuming enough. We fight four jaggers. And I read on the uh, description of this room, and this fight in particular, on insane difficulty, that if you're not... This is rated a 1 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, and if you're not ready for it, or if you die, you're not ready for the boss rush, is the way Dark Kefka put it. But I would take it a step further and say, if you die in this fight, not only are you not ready, but realistically speaking, what the fuck have you been doing this entire time? If you've made it this far and you can't beat four Jaggers? The only way four Jaggers could kill you is if you weren't ready to... I don't know, beat Mac the Knife? So yeah, basically this fight's kind of a joke, but the whole first room kind of gradually warms into the entire idea of the boss fight. Like I said, easy enough, and they give us royal syrup because they're nice and they know that we use a lot of FP. Or MP. I always say FP because I think of flower points, but it's totally called MP for some reason. So the way this boss rush is going to work basically is, and again, this second fight's nothing to write home about, it's just these two guys that spawn out of a chest. Anyway. The way this boss rush fight is going to work is different from the way it's been in previous versions of the hack. So if you've played those, you're not going to see the same stuff. You'd already know that if you've played through the castle, which I'm assuming you have by this point. The thing about it is, in the other versions, the six doors in the original castle were there. And you had the four regular quote-unquote quiz rooms and the two enemy rooms. The two enemy rooms contained different boss rushes. One was considered a mini boss rush, and the other was like the main attraction boss rush. But now, as you can tell, all the quiz rooms were taken all in a row, and now, likewise, all the boss rush rooms are gonna be taken in a row. So we have quote unquote six, you'll see why I say that later, rooms to go through in a row. Which is why you need to be well stocked and use your items wisely, is all I can say. So this room again is nothing to write home about, and Peach even with the steel shell equipped but still having her royal crown, which I thought would beef up her magic attack enough, still deals a paltry damage, but the holy probably shouldn't really have been used on that guy. Now the third fight in this room, equip Gino with the super ribbon. You will see why. But yeah, basically you need to come into the entire boss rush fight with items equipped to everybody that prevent one hit KOs. They pop up in every single room and they take you by surprise and because I'm terrible at blocking, you'll almost always need to have something equipped. Yeah. It's this Mugster. Is that what he was called? Mugger? Mugster? I don't know. So yeah, we took all those like a boss. And it's important still, you know, along with the Super Ribbon to have the, um, all his good stuff equipped for magic, so that you can kill the mugger in one shot. Ugh, and without the Jinx belt, of course we don't. But, that's okay.
this room while also nothing really to write home about definitely shows a little bit of an increase in difficulty. Don't worry, the next room is going to amp it up significantly. And now we can pretty much just wail on the stone mammoth here physically. And group hug when needed. That's going to be an important factor too. Group hug for Peach will now become imperative throughout these rooms. And be ready as well to go back and forth between different equipments for different people. As well, we'll bring in different allies at times, especially for the third room on. I've played ahead a little bit, and I can already tell you that it's going to be a festival once it gets down to those rooms. And by the way, when I said come into this uh, entire run through well equipped I mean that for enough for three rooms because once we get to the after the third room there's what you could call a break room and for the fourth fight put the protector ring on peach of course because Donkey Kong is back and he brought his friend the stumpet how nice Yeah, I got nothing. Anyways, um, at the third room afterwards, there will be a break, so that'll be nice. It helps that we'll, we get all this money that we get. I will say one thing, though. In playing through this, I have come to my own personal conclusion, the fact that Hyper Elixirs and the like all seem relatively pointless because I've used them in certain fights, and they don't really do shit. They don't raise the defense, they just kind of restore health. And it's a paltry amount at that, 255. It's like, even Jagger does that much in a single attack. So, if I had to say there's one thing you can really skip in terms of buying, it would be those kinds of things. And of course, timed blocks and timed healing is going to be imperative throughout these fights. Thankfully, Boulder doesn't do too much to us. Is this the last attack? No. He has to hurl one more of his minions at us. Good block, Gino. Proud of you for that. And a Hyper Elixir, like I said, don't enjoy it. Alright, you don't have to do this, but I am going to save state before every room. And likely... Yeah, but by the way, I love the sinister music. Um, likely I'm going to start doing uh, save states between each fight. Because these are just going to get ridiculous. And I recommend for this fight... Um, doing the Corona for Gino. You will notice, however, that yeah, the Chief does counterattacks, but that's for really any attack you throw at him. I said the Chief, but it's a director. I don't know what I was thinking. And Boomer likes to do yeah, those kind of attacks, which is why it's good that we have the Super Ribbon still on our buddy Gino. And as I was saying, it's good to do Corona constantly on these guys, because while it does cause counterattacks from the director, really special attacks are the best way to go about getting rid of the ninja. Is he the chief? I don't really remember. And physical attacks for Boomer, because... Really, you can go about any kind of um, direction in terms of when you kill these guys. They're all equally annoying. I would say that the ch the uh, 
you know, the ninja sprite, is the more annoying one. But since we have equipments that prevent one-hit KOs, he is f infinitely less annoying. Okay, there goes Boomer. Now we're going to aim our sights on the director. Yeah, Factory Chief, that's what he is. Okay, there he goes. And of course not. Sometimes when I do the uh, group hug, it lags. So I usually just adjust myself to, you know, doing the timed healing a little later. Oh, thank you, Factory Chief, for going away like that. Yay, they start dropping... I think most of them drop Caro Caro Colas in this room. Anyway, if that fight was not as hard, this next one's going to be awful. Equip physical attacks. For Mario, we're fine, but for Gino, we really need to have Bombs Away ready. Because this happens. Yeah, we get a 1, 3, and a 2. Go for Cloaker right away. I'll explain why in a second. But basically, the gimmick here will be further explained in the next fight, uh, when you see who we have to fight next. It, at this point, it might be pretty self-explanatory, but... Yeah, and then Cloaker decides to be a dick at the end of each of their attack cycles. And again, you know, this took me by surprise when I first tried to play through this. Cloaker will throw uh, one-hit KO attacks. I don't remember if he did that the first time we fought him, but he does it now, so basically be ready for it. Anyways, strategy for this room, or this fight in particular, is physical attacks only, because if you hit any of these guys with a magic attack, which I found out the hard way, again, they'll do immediate awful counter damage. It's just... I think the Axum Yellow does a Water Blast, and Cloaker does Corona or something like that. It, it, it's awful. Just avoid it if you can. And again, in this room, you know, the best way to go about it is to focus on one each time because they do consecutive attacks, and it's terrible. But, you know, spreading yourself out... See, there goes Cloaker. And some graphical glitches might occur, don't worry about that. If you spread it out, they stay around for a long time, making their c consistent attacks. It's like, would you rather take seven at once, which is effectively what happens, is that one by Cloaker, three by Black, two by Yellow, and one last one by Cloaker at the end of their phase. Would you rather take seven at once, or would you rather spread it out and then just take five at once, and then just take two at once? Which is what we're doing here since we're going for Black now. That's the strategy I prefer, basically. And in a perfect world, we'd have them attack Peach all the time, but of course that's not going to happen. And even unblocked attacks really don't hurt her too much, which is awesome. I love it. And yeah, yellow does a hefty amount to our old friend Gino here. But yeah, before I figured out the strategy, I had no idea how I was going to do this. <sighs> of course I wouldn't get a full heal timed. This fight is awful, and... Really, it goes... In order of difficulty, if I had to say anything, Dark Kefka, I'd say that... Obviously, the first room is easy. This room catches me off guard. And then, basically, the third room is not so hard. Fourth room is terrible. And I'm just... I'm just speculating. I've played through the third room, and it's really... It looks difficult, but once you get into a formula, it's not so bad. Fourth room, I haven't even been able to speculate how I'll go about doing it yet, so we will see when the time comes, I guess. And again, I wish they'd just attack Peach every once in a while, but of course, they're being dickheads.
Honestly, I think it's pretty cleverly crafted. This whole room, um, kind of start with the smithy ones, and then this room followed by the this fight followed by the next one. Oh, thank you for going down, Axe and Black. And again, the reason I'd say Cloaker before Axe and Black because while Black does have three in a row. His, his attacks aren't as strong as Cloaker, and sometimes his attacks, as you can tell, aren't even as strong as Axum Yellows. So, yeah, Cloaker first, and then Black, even though his attacks are pretty easily blockable. But yeah, this whole room is very well constructed, I, I think it's enjoyable. But yeah, this is the main excuse I have needed to have Peach in this one, is because without her, like if I had Bowser or Mallow, which we'll bring them in later, but not right now, Peach is going to be the most predominant one, finally. But beforehand, I never really saw a need for her, because, you know, the boss rush is the most important one, since you have limited life shrooms. So Peach acts as a healer, and she's a much better healer than Mallow is. So there you go, basically. Speaking of healing... Trying to replenish ourselves here. And the next fight is going to be fun, to say the least. Make sure that you have magic equipped for Geno now. Oh, save state, why not? Yeah! Carbon copy of the other fight, but now it's magic-based. And I think I only did it once, but from what I remember, physical attacks cause them to do uh, counter damage. Pretty sure that's how it works. It would make sense. And now you might be asking yourself, wait a minute, where's Red? Well, basically we already fought him, so at least that's what I interpreted. I don't think he comes back. Granted, there is one room, I looked on the uh, insane difficulty thing, there is one room that's like, he's not going to spoil it, so he didn't say who was going to be in it. I doubt that that's Red, but it could be for all I know. Gotta say, I love being able to do... Um, Mario's flame attacks, because before now, I've never really had a use for them, because most enemies, all the way up until this point, resisted. At least it seemed to me that way. And besides, Mario's physical was always seemed better to me anyway. But now these guys all take massive amounts of damage, and they stay burned, which is nice, so... And that only did one damage, I love it. So yeah, we might be wasting a shit ton of FP in this room, but it's totally worth it. Because it gets through the fight pretty quickly. And I would definitely say the physical fight with Cloaker, Black, and Yellow is infinitely harder than the one with Domino, Green, and Pink. And now you're probably thinking, well, I see kind of a theme running with these rooms, but what could the last room possibly be? Well, I will leave it up to a surprise. It's honestly pretty clever, I thought. I hate that attack. Because I can never block it. It sucks. Alright, and... No, oh, Domino stays around. And there he goes. Okay. Holy stone. I would love to hold on to that. Need to get rid of... Huh, get rid of, right. Just gonna heal, and I think we're good, actually, on FP now. Now, what's the last room you're... Or last fight you're asking yourself? Well, let me show you. Ta-da! We get Mad Adder and Earthlink. Now, there's an interesting... Um, pattern to this room, 
because they both do counter damage, but de it depends on what you do to who. Mad Adder takes um, special attacks and doesn't retaliate, whereas Earthlink takes physical attacks and doesn't retaliate. And what I'm doing right now is basically a way to start damaging them both and to display how they retaliate. It's honestly not that bad, and since we have Peach as a healer, any retaliation damage we can just kind of shrug off. See, there he goes. Tremor. Yeah, thankfully it wasn't too much. Let's see, there's that lag again. But of course, they both do both physical and special attacks, which kind of sucks, but whatever. It's best to focus on one because having two of them is annoying, so if you can get one down, then the other one becomes infinitely easier. And for this fight, really, you can have either... you can go either way. You can have Gino come in with a Star Rod and focus on Mad Adder, or you can have him come in with the Palms Away and focus on Earthlink. I won't say one is necessarily more difficult than the other, they're kind of on par with each other. Very interestingly designed. And thankfully it's not too terribly difficult. You just have to be... this. The whole boss rush, in a way, seems to prep you to have good uh, timed blocks. And sometimes this fight gets you down pretty awfully low. So you have to be ready with Karos and um, Peach reviving. And yeah, if you can tell, the third, um, the third round of attacks that they launch is really the worst because it's when Mad Adder does his dastardly uh, special attack, and the last time you, as you saw, he did Water Blast, which. It's pretty awful to us, especially Peach for some reason. Okay, there he goes. Thank God. Now we bring back Gino. And truly enough, he does have the Star Rod, so his physical attack is leaving a lot to be desired, but... I'm gonna roll with it. Okay, I didn't expect it to be that pathetic. Never mind. Oh god. Uh You know, I won't need it the rest of the boss fight, I don't think. So with uh this thing equipped, we can just wail on him. And actually, I think he takes more damage from special, so I'm gonna light him up. I think he's pretty close since we've been hitting him with fire attacks before. So, hopefully this should go quickly. It better, before my red essence wears out. Ah, I love it. And before this video comes to an end, I just want to say, if you see a crawl in um, updates, kind of like the one that happened between the last video and now, understand that it's getting close to the end of the year, and I have a 20-page paper to write. I've started on it, but I'm probably going to take the next week or so to do it. And the videos over the next while will come in t pairs. And by that I mean the boss rush fights two by two. So yeah, you can expect that. And again, I apologize for slow updates, but I'm sure you've all been there. You know, having school in the way, it's important and all that. And by the way, it's getting close to the holiday time, so there will be naturally a slowdown for that. And I say all of you should be spending time with your friends and loved ones over the holiday. As I'll be doing, going back down to Georgia. Excited! But anyway, those are the first two boss rush rooms. Not too bad. Next few will be much worse. To be continued.